Hey everybody, it's Amy Graham, the Badass Valkyrie, and today is May 3rd, 2021, and it is the 18th week of 2021, and this is the Finding 52 Focus for the Week. And I wanted to start off with a quote from Margaret Wheatley, and it is, Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, creating more unintended consequences and failing to achieve anything useful. This week's focus is actually on consequences and uh, trying to pay attention to the consequences that you create. And I say that having created <laughs> consequences for myself this weekend. I uh, Friday night, my older brother came over. Um, he was gonna stay the night, he had been golfing uh, earlier in the day and he's like, can I bring you anything? And I'm like, yeah, can you bring me um, a cheeseburger and tater tots from Sonic? Side note, Greg falls it, calls it comfort food because he hates Sonic. <laughs> but uh, my brother and I grew up in a drive-in restaurant uh, that my parents owned and it was modeled after Sonic. My my older brother, my dad, uh, actually helped bring Sonic into the southern part of the United States. And so we would spend uh, a lot of our weekends putting in the drive-in uh, menu things that you, you know, you push the button and you order. And then um, doing all the electrical work and things like that. Um, it was actually done by a company called Automatic in Oklahoma City and they um, were contracted to do all the Sonics at the time back in the 70s and 80s. And so, well, mostly 70s, but um, we did that over the weekends a lot of times and it was a family thing. We would all and go do that. One of my jobs was to collect all the extra uh, wiring and cables and all that kind of thing so that we had, you know, uh, excess. Um, so like if we needed a short end for something, they used it. Tangent. But anyway, <laughs> the uh, the reason I say that is that when he got here, he also had a regular Coke for me. And it was seven o'clock on a Friday night. And I'm like, huh, I'm gonna drink it. <sighs> 4.49 a.m. Saturday morning, May 1st, is when I went to bed. Not my plan. And that kind of decision affected the rest of my week. Uh, or weekend, actually. To the point of waking up this morning, I was like, oh, I'm so tired. And it's because my sleep was out of sync Instead of me going to bed, you know, by 11 o'clock every night, yeah, that was a consequence. And I didn't really think that one through. And so I was paying, a con uh, paying for a consequence that I created. Uh, one of the things that once I got my uh, gastric bypass in, tw in 2007, I would consciously make a choice to either eat something or drink something that would affect affect me negatively. But it wasn't me just blindly stuffing. And so a lot of friends and family would be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're eating that cupcake. And I'm like, I, you know, before my gastric bypass, I would have eaten two, three, maybe four cupcakes before I'm like, oh, I'm done. But when, after my gastric bypass and I would crave something sweet, part of my mental process was making sure that I, I satisfied that craving because if I didn't, I would obsess about it. And I'd just be like, I want a cupcake. Oh my God, I want a cupcake. I need a cupcake. I've got to have a cupcake. I need to have a cupcake. And I recognized the fact that it was 
addicted, addiction to sugar and to carbs and that kind of thing. And if I didn't give into it and have something small, and, and I will tell you now, it, it was very unlikely that I actually ate the entire cupcake. But I would eat it so that I could get that out of my head and just go on about my day. And that was a consequence of my decision because after I did that, I knew I would be sick. But if I hadn't done it, and eaten whatever portion of it that I did, my brain would not have shut off. And I would have just kept going, oh, I gotta have something, I gotta have something, I gotta have something. And I would have made a much worse decision. And so I paid a small price for that decision, alleviating a larger price. <laughs> And we all make we, we all make decisions that have consequences. Whether they're good consequences or bad consequences, every decision that you make has a consequence. And it can be small, it can be large. Last week when I talked about planning ahead, I talked about wanting to make sure that I, you know, get to a point where I can do my full marathon going back through those dominoes. If I don't start working in my intervals again, as far as my running goes, I know that the consequence that I will pay is that I will not be able to do that. And all of those dominoes are consequences, good or bad consequences of each decision that I make. And it all kind of flows down to get off your butt, get out and do your run. I do it every day. I, as of May 1st, I started um, putting my intervals back in and I run 25 seconds, walk 25 seconds, run 25 seconds, walk 25 seconds. I'm not ready to change that yet because I still have to get back to where I was. And that was the the interval that I was at before I got sick. So hopefully by um, mid-May or June 1st, I'll be able to up that to 30 seconds run, 20 seconds walk. That's my goal. So that I, I'm increasing my running and decreasing my uh, walking. Still have intervals, but I know that that is the next step to getting to running my marathon. But let's say I decided I didn't wanna do my run. One, I break my streak, my new streak. Two, I don't get my steps in. And so I will not hit 11,000 steps during the day. One of the consequences of not doing my full run or walk, my full distance, let's say that, in March and April was that I had a lot of days that I didn't hit even 10,000 steps. There were days that I didn't even hit 5,000 steps, which is crazy to me. But I, I was sick, I was exhausted, I had adrenal fatigue, and I'm just like, up to here. I'm like, I'm done, done. And while during that time frame, I was more focused on just recovering and getting better. One of the consequences that I was left with, and as this is May 3rd, <laughs> I had to face over the weekend was, you had less days over 11,000 steps than you did under 11,000 steps. That's the first time that has happened in years. And I'm just like, okay, all right, no more. And because I was not, I mean, I was paying attention, but I was worried about other things and it wasn't a focus in my head and I wasn't reflecting on what I was doing and how it was affecting me 
all the way across the board, that is a consequence that I have to deal with. I have to look at March and April and go, there, there really wasn't anything that I could have changed other than forcing myself to get out and then I would have been miserable. My neck was killing me and it was just, I was done. So one of my goals for May is alleviating that consequence and making sure that I go out and I do my walk, my run, my walk, whatever it is, every day. And I do the full distance because if I don't, I am not going to hit my 11 steps or 11,000 steps every day. My goal is to have less than five that are under 11,000 for the month. And I, I mean, my stretch goal is zero, but I also have to be realistic and, and know that I'm still recovering um, from my injections and uh, neck um, ablations. So I'm giving myself little leeway, but I'm also focused on that. When I go out, like on May 1st, I did my full run and I did my full intervals. And yesterday I was sore. I was really sore. But instead of giving in and going, well, I'm going to have to use one of those five days, I actually just did a walk and didn't put, I put in a couple of intervals just to kind of see where I was at and see if I could. And it was, it still was too sore. So I'm like, okay, your compromise is you have to do your full distance, but take your time, do it as a walk and take this week. If you feel like you need to, alternate, run, walk with walk, run, walk with walk, um, and alternate those days until you can get to a point where you're not in pain when you run. That's my compromise. And will there be some pain? Yes, I know that. <laughs> and that is a consequence that I am willing to face because I want to get better and get back to where I was. And I know that it is not going to be a hindrance to my recovery. Um, had I pushed myself, yeah, that might have been a hindrance to my, my recovery because it's so soon after my ablation. Consequences. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But when you don't pay attention to what those consequences might be, they can have long reaching effect on your plans for the future. If I'm not putting in the work right now, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to run a marathon in 2022. There's just no way. <laughs> so I have to put in the work now to do that. And there is a caveat to all of this. I paid that price. Those consequences have been dealt with for March and April. I can't change them. There's nothing that I can do to change the outcome of those consequences. So I'm not gonna worry about it. But what I'm going to do is let those consequences that I did have to deal with guide me. Again, I know what I gave up, the goals that I gave up for various reasons, but I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to focus, or what's the word? I'm not going to dwell on it, but I am going to let it guide me. So I, I don't know exactly how to put that, <laughs> but it's like, I know those consequences were high and I had to pay that price and I'm not willing to pay that price again, but I'm also not going to let these things make me worry and, and focus on what I can't change. So moving forward, 
I will pay much more attention to the consequences that I have day in and day out. You know, just like staying up till 4.45, 4.49. That's when I, when my aura ring actually says that I went to bed or went to sleep. Um, I was actually in bed like at 4.40. Took me, it only took me nine minutes to fall asleep. That's how tired I was. But I know that drinking that Coke was a consequence in and of itself. Cause I'm like, mm. and I rationalized that to, well, you've already had some the past two weeks since you had your ablation, you know, this week, let's mm, one last one, you know, it's still April 30th. You can start May fresh. Did I start May fresh? <laughs> no, I started May at 4.40 in the morning. Yeah, not my ideal thing. Now, had I thought about it, I was like, I should have just stayed up for the sunrise for Beltane. But I was so tired. I was just like, I gotta go to bed. And, uh, and the clue in I should have had was when Greg actually went to bed before me and I'm like, I'll be up in a minute. I'll be up in a minute. Two hours later, I'm like, oh my gosh. There what I did have a mission that I was doing and I'm like, this is silly, but I got what I wanted, which for those of you gamers out there who play Ark Survival Evolved, the server that I play on had an Easter event and some of the different animals that you can tame were colored, like Easter egg colors. And... <laughs> The bigger monsters, like the bigger dinosaurs, will eat the smaller dinosaurs. And so when they respawn, they don't have these colors because the Easter event was over. And they ended it Friday night. And I'm like, oh, I need to go get my jelly bean sheep. So there's sheep that you can get. And I had gotten one that was yellow, bright yellow, with pink horns. And I was like, wait, I want... I want a couple more that were jelly bean colors. I searched and searched. I found a blue one. And so I got that one, tamed it, and took it back. And then it took me an hour and a half to find any other sheep that was Easter egg colored. Finally, finally, I found a pink one. And I'm like, okay. I was like, three Easter egg colored sheep. I'm good. And so I got those and did that, but that's kind of what I was like, well, I'm awake. I can't go to sleep. I might as well go find my sheep. And now they just did the server update. And I'm like, oh, all these Tyrannosauruses, T-Rexes are going to kill the sheep. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go find one. Sometimes <laughs> the gamer brain does not make as much sense, especially when I just literally said it out loud. I'm like, yeah, they're going to think I'm insane. But it's kind of what I do. I love to game and it's all dinosaurs and cute little animals. And I'm like, oh, that, I need that. I need that. Consequences. Getting those three jelly bean sheep after drinking that Coke. I'm like, had I not had the Coke, I'd have been like, I am so tired. I just can't stay awake. I'm like, I'm good with two. I'm going to bed. No, because I had that and I was awake, I made myself stay up even later because I was on a hunt. And I was like, oh, where, where's one more? I just need one more. Consequences. So, uh, it all kind of ties in, like I said, with planning ahead. And what consequences that you cause yourself today could still be consequences in the future and that's something that you kind of have to pay attention to and when you are reflecting on the month or the quarter I can't believe we're already in month five of 2021 the second month of the second quarter I'm like oh my gosh this year is just like whoosh, flying by and so I was just like okay 
it is time to get your shit together, Amy. <laughs> and I'm like, nope, nope, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. So uh, later on this week, I will be putting up um, my month in review for April and then how I have May set up with all my goals and things like that. And it's going to look a little bit different than it has the past four months. So like I said, Amy is on a mission. I'm like, mm, no, no, we, we are, we have the ablation done. We're feeling better. It's like time to get back on track. And so those consequences are still consequences as well, but they're good consequences, at least for me. Do I know that, you know, I will start pushing my body a little bit each time? Yes. But I am also very well aware of what threw me into a loop March and April. So there you have it. Consequences. I'm not saying you don't have them or you don't make the, the choice that you need to make in that time. Just realize that all of your choices will have consequences. And taking those consequences into account when you make those decisions helps. And that's what I'm having to do right now is taking those consequences into consideration when I make a decision. And that helps me kind of level out my day and figure out, you know, weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, yearly goals, three yearly goals, five year goals, 10 year goals, 25 year goals. And it kind of keeps me on track. And when you have a couple of bad months, like I have March and April, realize that those were consequences that you have paid, you're done and move forward and try to just get better. There you have it. Uh, I wanted to do a quick uh, Happy Mother's Day ahead of time uh, on Sunday for those of you who are a mother or a fur baby mama. I wholeheartedly feel like I am a fur baby mama with Heimdall in tear and soon to be one more, adding a new female to the house soon. But um, I also recognize that this is a very difficult week for a lot of people, including me. And so I will not be on social media very much this week just because that's a consequence I don't want to deal with. <laughs> All the Mother's Day ads, all of that, I can live without for a week. So take that into consideration as well, that there could be friends that don't handle this week very well. Okay. Whew. That came out a lot more emotional than I thought, but okay. Anyway, consequences. That's the focus for this week, and I hope you all have a wonderful a uh, week ahead and I will see you soon.